everybody. Welcome to Pyramid Knits. My name is Liz. I am a knitter and natural dyer based outside of Taos, New Mexico in the southwestern United States. You can find me on Etsy and on Instagram as Pyramid Dye Works. I am coming to you from a different corner of my uh, living room on a Saturday morning. I have been having some issues with color. I, I bought a new phone and I apologize if that was annoying to anybody last time. Um, I know there was a lot of weird color shifting happening. Uh, my phone doesn't seem to really understand um, the colors of my walls against the colors of my skin. Uh, it's seeming to have a little bit, a little bit of trouble with that. Um, so I actually did go and I recorded outside earlier this week. Um, I sat out on my little back porch. I had the mountains behind me and um, it was just like unusable. Like the lighting was so bad and you kept hearing the wind coming through and it was just like, oh my God. So now I'm re-recording it like I have time to do that this week, but I really want to get an episode out there before I leave town. Uh, I am about to go on a trip to the UK, to Scotland, and I'm going to hike the West Highland Way. Um, I talked a little bit about this before, so I'll just go over it briefly. Uh, but I first discovered the West Highland Way through Kate Davies, who is a knitwear designer who lives along the trail. And she put out a book several years ago now, um, God, probably like seven or eight years ago. Uh, it came out not too long after I started knitting. Like some of my, no, that was a different Kate Davies. Never mind. <laughs> Anywho, um, <clears throat> this is my third cup of coffee. She put out this book a few years back um, called The West Highland Way that is all patterns based on different sections of the trail. And she talks about the history of the trail and the uh, flora and the fauna and the geology. And I got this book and, you know, just okay so could you get down please this is not not being helpful not helpful baby no right, off. He's off. <laughs> anyhow um yeah so that's the first time i heard about the west highland way and it kind of became a bucket list trip for me uh, it seemed like a backpacking trip that like I could do <laughs> uh, because you still go through towns. There's still the opportunity, um, you know, to restock. It's not like going out and doing the Pacific Crest Trail or something in America where you're just like backwoods in the mountains um, and there's bears and mountain lions and things. There are not things that will kill you in Scotland. I'm very excited about that. Um, I went on a practice camping trip last weekend uh, which I did film some of. There's a little uh, little bit at the end there where you can come along on my camping trip with me. Uh, but yeah, you know, I had to keep all of my food well away from my tent, put it in the bag, throw it up in the tree, tie it off. So just in case if a bear or a mountain lion or something rumbles through my sight in the middle of the night, <laughs> they're not going to come looking for the food in my tent. They're going to come looking for the food in the bag that's dangling from the tree that they can't reach. Um, that's the theory anyway. So I'm very excited about going to Scotland and not having to worry about that. Also no rattlesnakes. Like I was worried about rattlesnakes on my camping trip last weekend. Um, I mean, it's no Australia here, but there's a lot of things that can kill you <laughs> that are out, out in the wilderness here or hurt you significantly. Mm. Anyway, so stick around at the end for a little camping footage. So on this trip, I'm also doing a lot of other traveling because if I'm gonna go that far, I might as well go a few places and like make it worth my while. If I'm gonna deal with the jet lag, it better be a significant trip. So I'm gonna be gone for three weeks. Oh my God, three weeks. I don't think I've ever, I've never taken a trip this long. Like 10 days is, has kind of been my tops. I mean, I guess kind of I've done like a meditation retreat in the middle of a trip that then made it like two weeks long, but I've never been anywhere for three weeks. And I've never been away from my sweet animals for three weeks. Oh, I'm going to be so sad. I'm going to miss you guys so much. And I know you're just going to be so bad. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, uh, so I am in prime planning for what knitwear to take with me and what knitting to take with me. So let's just go over that real quick. I'm going to try and keep this brief because I have like, I mean, clearly a gazillion things to do before I leave. So don't let me ramble, please. If I start to get distracted, speak up and tell me to keep on topic. Hopefully I'll hear you. So <laughs> first thing, um, I don't remember if I had cast this on even in my last episode. Which side is the front? Which side is the front? So this is the sleeveless vest, and it is a pattern by Lone something, uh, which looks Swedish to me, some sort of Scandinavian. Uh, it's a nice little sleeveless vest. So this is going to be my Scottish hiking vest. Um, that's the plan anyway. The yarn I am using is Green Mountain Spinnery, uh, Lana is the base and the colorway is Olivera. It's a nice two-ply fingering woolen spun, very lightweight. I can feel it's, it's going to be quite warm for um, how small it is and I should be able to pack it down pretty tiny too uh, because woolen spun means that there's a lot of air trapped within the yarn itself, um, which is why it keeps you warmer because there's more space for the air to get trapped and get warmed up by your body heat. Um, plus this is a nice ribbed pattern which will create these extra little air pockets on the inside that can insulate me. Um, I'm having some trouble with this <laughs> with this pattern. Uh, it's not done and I'm leaving tomorrow clearly. Uh, I'm not actually going to be on the trail for another week um, so I do have a little bit more time to finish this, but I really want to block it before I go. <laughs> Just tomorrow. Um, because this yarn blooms a lot and it does feel a little bit scratchy, a little bit stiff like this. Uh, and whenever I blocked my swatch, it did fluff up quite a bit. So I really want to be able to block this before I get on the trail. Um, which I could potentially like do it in my hotel room, you know. But I think what I'm going to try and do... So what I have left to do, I am almost ready to join the shoulders on this side, um, and then I'll have to do the other, the left front, and join the shoulders, and then I'm going to block it. And then once I'm already on the trip, I'm going to go back in and pick up for the neckline and the shoulders. Um, and the pattern has you do just a little rolled hem. Uh, with the addition of this horizontal, horizontal horizontal stitching line, which it has repeated here on the front, on the back, and then also along the bottom after the ribbing. Um, and whenever I purchased this pattern, looking at the project photos, I thought that it was a Latvian braid because that does um, a very similar effect. But this is just one stitch going across, it's not that twisted stitching that you can get with the Latvian braid with the two colors, you know? <sighs> my dog's chewing on yarn now. We're just gonna ignore him because he's doing it to get my attention. So we are not going to reward that behavior. Nerves of steel, just let your dog chew on the yarn until he realizes that you don't care and then he won't do it. Uh, okay. Yeah, so that ended up being quite um, a bit more fiddly of a technique than I anticipated. I ended up having to redo it once. Uh, um, I found a really great tutorial from Franklin Habit about how to do this, which I really needed because this pattern, um, though perfectly clear and fine, is written by a Scandinavian person. And generally speaking, um, their patterns, especially the more traditional-ish kind of patterns, um, I mean, this isn't really traditional, but anyway, their patterns tend to have less detail because they assume that you know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, unlike indie designed patterns or a lot of patterns that are released 
like in the US where, you know, knitting is not a cultural tradition here, um, like it is there. So they don't expect you to know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've definitely had a little bit of trouble with this. I have realized that my stitch counts are off between the front and the back. I'm not really sure where I went wrong with that. Um, couple of potential things is that I just didn't understand the pattern because I have run into that, especially doing the horizontal stitch line. Like I was saying, I had to watch that video to actually understand how to do it. Um, and once I saw the video of the person doing the horizontal stitches, suddenly I was like, oh, those words make sense now. <laughs> I just had to see it visually to really understand what they were trying to tell me to do. And then, yeah, somehow my stitch stitch numbers got, stitch counts got off. Um, I am going to blame that on my printer breaking. Um, I am definitely a printed pattern person. I like to write on my patterns. I go through at the start and I highlight my stitch counts all the way through the pattern so that once I start knitting, I don't have to think about it again. I can just refer to my notes and say, that's the one that I'm doing. Um, so I suspect it has something to do with that because my printer broke. So I didn't print this pattern out. I just have it on my phone. So <laughs> clearly I missed some decreases or I added extra decreases or I picked the wrong size for the back decrease. I don't know. I don't know. I need to get my printer fixed. <laughs> I'm very much a tangible person. Tangible, tangible. I want that piece of paper in front of me. And the funny thing is because I'll just tuck the pattern, you know, the paper pattern in my project bag with my project. So I always have it. But so many times I will sit down to knit and I'm just like, oh, where's my phone? And then I have to get up and go find my phone. Like it's plugged in in the other room and it's charging. I'm like, well, I want to knit, but I need to charge my phone. And then it becomes a whole thing. Where if I just have the piece of paper in the bag, it's always there. And I don't forget which size I'm knitting. <laughs> I feel like holding that my hair is just like getting frizzier. It's like all the static. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can really feel it. Okay, so... Yeah, the plan for this then is to finish knitting it today. Uh, I have a lot of other things to do today, so I'm gonna have to, oh my God. Yeah, I have fuzz like all over me. Um. <laughs> and yeah, so that's not gonna get finished until tonight, I know that. <sighs> Which means I'm gonna have to block it tomorrow morning. I'm leaving tomorrow. I do live in the New Mexican high desert, thankfully. Uh, so I think that if I can finish it tonight, I can block it first thing tomorrow morning. And I've got one of those um, mesh sweater drying racks, you know? <clears throat> so I'll just lay it in that and hang it outside. And I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be sunny tomorrow. I'm sure it's going to be windy. We had the most massive windstorm yesterday. It was ridiculous. I mean... It felt like um, Blade Runner 2048 whenever dude goes and finds Harrison Ford in that high rise in that desert and you like can't see anything and there's just like monoliths in the, yeah, that's what it felt like. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, anyhow, you told me to get back on track. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, wind. Oh yeah, so hopefully it's not that windy. <laughs> But it's just breezy enough to really dry that out quickly. Um, and I don't have to leave until, you know, even one o'clock in the afternoon, one or two in the afternoon. And I'll still be fine. So I think it can dry in that amount of time. So it's still possible that that can get done and I can wear it on the trail. We're going to go for it. Um, oh, God. Other knitting. I've got socks. I've got socks. I've got a pair of socks that's almost done. I need to finish these. I would love to finish these before I leave because I'm not gonna need these needles again. Um, I really do not like these needles. Uh, I am using them because my cat chewed on the cord on my other good uh, Chiao Gu red lace sock needles. Uh, so I am using these wooden ones from Knit Picks. 
uh, that I just, I don't like wooden needles really much anymore. They they're, feel too sticky to me. And this cable is just like so stiff. Um, so point being, it'd be nice to just be done with this and not have to take these needles with me. And so if I line it up, all right. Oh, oh, look at that. Okay, legit, you guys, I think I have one row and then I'm gonna set up for the tubular bind off and I'm done. So these need to get done before I leave my house tomorrow. <laughs> so they can just get packed in my suitcase as socks instead of packed up as a uh, work in progress where I have to take all the extra yarn. And blah, blah, blah. So that needs to get done in the next 24 hours as well. <clears throat> One that is not going to get done in the next 24 hours, but I think is going to be probably pretty good plain knitting is some socks that I have not touched in months. Oh my goodness. These are my Oktoberfest socks. Oktoberfest socking. By Janice, I want to say. Janice Hope. Is that right? Is that what it says at the bottom of the screen? That'd be pretty cool. Um, real pretty. I've made it through the heel. Uh, I definitely did the heel incorrectly. I did not do the, the patterning right, but whatever. Um, it's a heel. <laughs> so I'm working my way down the foot. Now you can see my guess it there. Yeah, my Oktoberfest socken. So yeah, I'm going to return to these. They are clearly taking me a long time because they're small and cabled and fiddly, but good God, are they gorgeous. I mean, oh, oh. this is still a first sock. Um, yeah, so this will be good, good plain knitting, um, you know, something to keep my brain engaged, but also small and, you know, I get a break on the back side because I'm doing stocking out on the bottom of the foot on the, on the leg. You also kind of got a, a break on the back because it's just ribbing across the back. You only have the cable panel on the front of the sock. Um, yeah, and I do have a good pair of, I had two pairs of Chiaogu sock needles, which I thought, I'm covered, I have two. But now I only have one, and they're on my socks that are going to take forever, so I have to buy another pair, pair of needles. Uh, which I'm going to have to do on my trip. Uh, so first, first leg of the trip, I'm going to Washington, D.C., um, I'm going to stop off there on my way out of the country to visit a friend from college. Um, and we both lived out in LA at the same time. Uh, so we were buddies out there too. And I have not seen her. Oh my God, probably since we were in LA. Is that possible? I've, I've been back out there. Well, God, it's been a long time. It's been 10 years, probably, or more. Ooh, that's wild. Anyway, <laughs> so she's living out in DC now. Uh, so we're going to catch up. I'm going to go and see her. And I would really like to give her a little knitted gift as a thank you for letting me just like crash at her house because I legit did just text her one day and I was like, hey, are you going to be around in April around this time? Can I just like come stay at your house and you can drive me to and from the airport? <laughs> she was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so I'd love to give her a little knitted gift. And getting colder, still a little bit warm. <laughs> so I got this lovely skein of Farmer's Daughter's Fiber. Uh, it is in the Recollect base, which is a 100% white and black Rambouillet base. So it's on, dyed onto a gray base. Uh, 185 yards, two ounces, colorway I cannot pronounce. Can you? Sinopa, Sinopa, I don't know. Um, it's this lovely deep purple. Uh, yeah, you can see it gets really deep and plummy in here. Oh, it's really nice. Um, and I got this in a yarn swap or a little like care package swap that I did in the Heather and Hops podcast Discord group. Uh, there was a little subgroup of us that got together and uh, did a little care package swap and sent each other yarn and little goodies. And that is the one that I, that is the yarn that I got. Um, so I wanted to knit my friend a pair of the Woods Edge Mitts by Alicia Plumer. 
Um, and I have knit these before also as a gift. Uh, they knit up pretty quickly uh, and they have some interest to them. So yeah, again, I'm leaving tomorrow. I, I'm gonna arrive at her place in about 48 hours. Um, I'll get in there on Monday evening. It's currently Saturday morning. So my plan with that is to wind that up at tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh my God. Everything is just to the last minute. I'm so bad with knitting deadlines. It just has to go at my own pace. Oh Lord. <laughs> so I'm gonna wind up that yarn tomorrow morning. I am going to cast the project on tomorrow evening when I am staying by myself in the hotel by the airport in Albuquerque, <laughs> which sounds super exciting. Um, so yeah, I'm flying out super early on Monday morning. So I just got a hotel room down there. Um, it's about a two and a half hour drive from two and a half hours to three hours, depending um, from my house to the closest major airport. So yeah, trying to catch a 6 a.m. flight with a three hour drive beforehand, it just, yeah. So I'm gonna drive down on Sunday. <laughs> I've got some big city things to do. I gotta go to REI, camping things, um, which of course, if I have to drive three hours to an airport, I have to drive a few hours to an REI too. Uh, anyway, so I'll have some time. I'm getting off track again. You reminded me, thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to cast those on and hopefully get, you know, get it going so it'll be ready for the flight tomorrow morning. And then I will have uh, air time in the plane to work on it knitting. I will also have five hours in the Denver airport to work on it. So there's a chance. There's a chance I could at least have one mitt done by the time I get there. And you know what? That's fine. I can knit the other one while I'm there. <laughs> And she can, they can be gifted on my way out the door. That's okay. Um, otherwise, for travel knitting, my plan is to buy sock yarn when I'm there. That's the plan. And I'm going to buy some sweater quantities too. I mean, let's be real. I'm going to Scotland and England and Iceland. I'm buying some yarn, y'all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the plan is, yeah, I'm going to pick up some sock yarn along the way and uh, knit socks along the trail. And um, yeah, that'll be my my travel knitting. So uh, that that's everything. I have rambled too many times. Uh, my coffee is starting to get cold. I have so many more things to do. I have to edit this now. Like, when am I going to do that? I didn't even think about editing. I just filmed. Oi, oi, oh my God. So I'm going to go and do some things <laughs> and start getting things done. Um, and yeah, if you want to uh, keep up on what's happening in my travels, you can follow me over on Instagram. I'm sure I'll be throwing up some stories and things along the way. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys are having a uh, lovely spring or fall time. And I'm going to go get busy. See you next time. Bye. friends. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this might end up being very windy. Um, I'm trying to cover up the microphone with my hand a little bit. Um, hi. Uh, greetings from the Continental Divide Trail uh, outside of Abiquiu, New Mexico. I just passed over the Chama River. Um, I'm going backpacking. In case you can't tell. I have a dog. Just one dog. Where is he? 
There he is. Just one. I left the other one with my dad because um, he's a little bit of a press and he doesn't like camping. So, <laughs> um, yeah, two weeks from today, I am hitting the trail on the West Highland Way in Scotland. Um, I'm definitely not well trained enough. <laughs> I mean, I've been walking for, I don't know, like a half a mile. I'm already bright red because it's just warm outside and sun and everything. Um, but yeah, I'm like, ooh, yeah, this pack is heavy. I can feel that in my legs. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is like my test camp. Um, I just have been walking up this valley here behind me. And I am headed towards this valley over here. And we'll find a place to camp up there um, and enjoy the scenery. Uh, this is O'Keefe country, if you can't tell. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ghost Ranch, where um, George O'Keefe used to live and painted the scenery there a lot. Um, a lot of famous landscapes around this area. Uh, it's just a couple miles down the road from here. So, yeah, in the middle of O'Keefe country, we're hiking in. I have a dog. It's sunny, it's windy, and I'm not in great shape. <laughs> okay, let's go have fun. <laughs> hey, hey, friends. Um, oh, the sun. Uh, I'm hot. <laughs> I should take off this flannel, that's what I should do. Um, yeah, I've been walking now for about an hour. I've walked probably about two, two and a half miles. Um, Uh, I'm out of that first valley now, and I'm starting to head up this little other trail that goes between these hills here. I'm starting to get into some trees, some pinions. I'm setting backdrops. All right, let's keep going. Hey, everybody. <laughs> oh, goodness, the sun is still bright. It's still warm. I just walked down to the creek and splashed some water on my face. Um, see. Uh, here, let's go stand in the shade. I know that'll work better. Oh, hey, that does work better. Crazy. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. So I've hiked in probably four or five miles, maybe? I'm not sure exactly. I'm going to have to check. Uh, the map whenever I get home tomorrow and see exactly how far I came in, but I think it's around there. Um, it looks like the trail is about to start a climb out of the uh, wilderness area here, um, just a few hundred yards up from here, and I found this nice little camp spot that already has a fire ring and a little log to sit on next to it and some rocks and stuff to sit on. Um, and it's nice, nice and cleared. Um, so we are going to set up camp here and just chill out for the rest of the afternoon and enjoy being in the wilderness. Um, one thing I learned today is my pack is too heavy. Um, it, I'm definitely carrying more stuff than I'm going to be whenever I go to Scotland. Um, I definitely have like my cook pan is too heavy. I'm going to get a new one. Um, I'm carrying more water than I will be. Uh, I did carry in a couple beers, <laughs> which I'm not going to be doing in Scotland. <laughs> uh, but I figured it's one night and to treat myself, won't that be so nice to hike into our camp spot and sit down in the sun. So I think after I set up my tent, that may be the next order of business. Um, I brought a book. I brought a couple pairs of socks to work on. Um, yeah, so we're just going to chill out, enjoy the afternoon, enjoy the quiet and the wind. 
oh the sunshine and tonight is a full moon um, from where I am I'm not gonna be able to see it rising uh, since I'm down here in the trees but it's nice and open up above me tonight so I should be able to should be nice and, and bright around the campground if I need to get out and pee I shouldn't have to grab my headlamp or anything <laughs> Um, all right, so yeah, Kaza's wandering around the woods and uh, exploring his new home for the night. Um, and I'm gonna start relaxing. That's awesome. 